Hallelujah. Well, the title of this message is, where's my, sister, my, my charity with my PowerPoint? Okay, well, the title of this message is Learning to Walk in Faith. Amen? Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. So, whether you're a new believer who just now started out in faith or someone who has been in church for years but over and over again have continued to, to fail in the elementary or grade levels uh, of, of your uh, levels of your faith, this message is for you. Amen? It also helps those of us who need, to, who need to understand how people, you know, starting out in faith progress. Praise Yahweh. So, again, the, the message is learning to walk in faith. Amen? You ready to learn how to walk in faith? Amen. So we have the picture here of the baby. And when you were born, you could not yet walk. You could not do much of anything, could you? Over time, you learned to crawl and then walk, talk, and ultimately develop into a functional human being, just as a human being should. There was a process to all of this learning, right? Next slide. And this process included emulating those around you who have already successfully learned to walk. Next slide. Again, you were not born knowing how to do everything that a human should eventually know how to do, right? Next slide. Also, interesting enough, no one made you learn to walk. No one forced it on you. Yes, there, there is encouragement from others as you learn to walk. Right? Next one. But it's a natural thing for a child to want to learn. Next one. There is a, a natural desire to learn how to walk and then to do it. Next one. The same is true when it comes to walking out your faith. The same is true in the spiritual realm. It is a process. Let me hear you say process. Isaiah 28, 9 says this. To whom will he teach knowledge? And to whom will he explain the message? Those who are weaned from milk, from the milk. Those taken from the breast. For it is precept upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. It's a process. Am I right, brothers and sisters? Not me, but is Yahweh right? Amen? First, we have to desire to learn how to walk in the faith. Then we begin to learn by example. And finally, we then begin to walk all on our own. But what does it mean to walk in the faith? How do we walk out the faith? Let us start at the beginning of, the, of this process. First, we are born into the new life of the faith. As our Messiah said in John 3, 7, he said, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. But what does this mean? This concept of being born again is mentioned elsewhere in scriptures, for example, 1 Peter 1, 23, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, amen, through the living and abiding word of Elohim, amen, hallelujah, not, we're, not, we're born of imperishable seed, Yeshua the Messiah, amen, let's give you all we praise, amen. Now, the moment when we are born again in the faith, <clears throat> we do not know much. We are not expected to know much. We simply know, because Yeshua was put in our heart by faith, that the word of Elohim is true. Amen? And we're talking not only the word Yeshua, the living word, but also the written word that represents him. Amen? That's all we know. But, we don't, but we're not expected to know much about the word of Yahweh, Elohim, because we're just new, right? 
babies in our faith. Next slide. We are like small children, and as any child, there is much to learn. Hebrews 5.13 says, For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But being a child in the faith, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, is supposed to be temporary. Amen? We're not, all, we're not supposed to stay a child in the faith forever. As Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. See, the only time we are told not to mature and not only stay a child, but be at the youngest stage of a child, specifically the word mentioned is infant, is concerning sin or evil. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 14, 20, where Paul says, Brothers, do not be children in your thinking, but be infants, say infants, in evil or sin. But in your thinking, be mature. Amen? Next slide. Now notice, Paul says that when it comes to sin or evil, we should remain infants. That means we must keep our old fleshly identities as helpless and undeveloped as little baby infants who can't even crawl or even feed themselves. All an infant can do is cry and whine for the things it needs to grow you know, well, such as nurturing and care. We as newborn believers or Christians in, Mas in Elohim are to be nurtured to grow and mature in righteousness, right? Not in sin, not in evil. So guess what our heavenly parent, Yeshua, remember Yeshua said, I, have you, I've been with you so long and you've not seen the Father? Guess what our heavenly parent, Yeshua, tells us to do when our old crybaby sinful fleshly selves start to act up and whine? Well, what does he say do? If you, yep. Luke 9 says, And he said to all, to all, let me hear you say all. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. Say deny himself. And take up his cross, how often? Daily. And follow me. Right? So you see the little, little, your little uh, fleshly self just whining, ah, 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 getting on your nerves, right? You, you say, nah, I'm not catering to you. Like Denisha's song, thy will be done, not my will, right? So what happens if we need to support, if, 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 if the needs or the support of a little infant are denied or taken away? What happens? Does someone, someone know? Say it loud. Huh? Yeah, he, that's right. The child, the infant, will fail to thrive. So Romans 6 says this. We know that our old self, that old child, whiny self, and it wants to sin and do evil, was crucified with him in order that what would happen? The body of sin might be brought to what? Nothing. Right? We want it to die. So that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Messiah, we believe, this is faith, right? That we will also do what? Live with him. That's right. So many are failing to properly follow after our master Yeshua because they have not truly died to themselves. Whether we're new in the faith, daily dying to ourselves by denying the desires of our flesh and treating them as dead, you know, or crucified with Messiah, is crucial if we want to successfully live in Messiah. You can't successfully live in Messiah if you don't die like you're supposed to in your flesh. Next slide. Now, how does that look? Little, yeah. We are not to be nurturing and caring for our old, evil, sinful, fleshly identity. Amen? That's our old, evil, sinful, fleshly identity. 
All right? You see the mother, she's looking so loving and sitting down at that little baby. Right? It's so, it's so, our flesh is pleasurable. It, it appeals to us. It's attractive to us. But we need to start seeing our flesh in the eyes of Yahweh. We need to hate what Yahweh hates and only love what Yahweh loves. Amen? Some of us are loving our flesh instead of hating it like we should. Amen? That's why we keep it alive instead of killing it daily. Amen? Hallelujah. Turn to the next slide. Because what happens when our flesh matures, if we take care of it, if we nurture our flesh, it brings death. Right? And unless we repent, we ultimately end up just like Judas. Remember in, in the movie, The Passion, these little things chase Judas around until he end up throwing himself off the cliff with a noose around his neck, right? Well, we'll end up just like Judas sold, who sold out his savior, his master, because of the fleshly cares of the world, right? He wanted money. He was pursuing mammon, right? right? Worldly wealth. Romans 8.12 says this. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? That's right. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, that little baby of flesh whining, right? You will what? For all who are led by the Spirit are who? That's right. Sons of Elohim. Amen. Hallelujah. So in order to mature, we must, say must, by faith, say faith. We must daily by faith choose to nurture and feed our born-again new life of Messiah identity. Amen? That's Yeshua in us, the hope of glory. Amen? Hallelujah. Look at Galatians 2.20. It says, I have been crucified with Messiah. It is no longer I who live, but Messiah who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by what? Faith. In the son of Elohim who loved me. Amen? Just like a loving parent. And, and gave himself for me. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's give Yahweh praise. Amen? Hallelujah. Yes, walking in faith means denying our fleshly self. What we don't want to do is deny the Holy Spirit, who is Yeshua, in us, treating him as if he's dead. Right? Now we got a problem. Ephesians 4.30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of Elohim, in whom ye were sealed for the day of redemption. Isaiah says, but they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy. And he himself, talking about Yahweh, fought against them. How many know that Yahweh, you know, he says be humble because Yahweh resists the proud, right? That's what our flesh is. It's all puffed up. It's all about itself. Selfish. What it want, you know, it makes itself more important than, than anything else, right? Amen. We don't want Yahweh to fight against us, right? That's a brother, brothers and sisters. That's, that's a battle that, that we can't win, right, brothers and sisters? Hebrews 10, 29 says, How much more severely do you think one deserves to be punished who has trampled on the son of Elohim, profaned the blood of the covenant that sanctified him? This person was sanctified by this, you know, and insulted the spirit of grace. Amen? Hallelujah. Hebrews 6, 1 puts it this way. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Messiah. In other words, some of us are still stuck in the, in the, in the elementary levels of our faith. And we're, not, we don't, we're, we're, we're struggling there. We're barely holding on. We're striving. We keep going in circles there. But it says we're supposed to go on to maturity, right? Not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works. Why? Because we keep falling into our sin, into that flesh. We keep falling into that old fleshly self. And so we have to keep on repenting for the same old things over and over again. We're not getting the victory. And, we, we, and Satan's playing with our mind because we keep playing with Satan. Right? Amen? And not laying down, again, the, a foundation of repentance uh, from dead works. And, of course, if you're, if you're laying, again, uh, the, the foundation for, 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 for dead works to your flesh, then that means you've, you're not in the faith, right, towards Elohim. Because it says, and of faith towards Elohim. Right, you can't be in faith with, Yah, with Elohim and laying down a foundation for, of dead works at the same time, can you? 
and of instructions about washing. See, after, see, it's okay, it's all good and well to repent from sin. Yahweh will forgive you if you're sincere, but you have to also learn how to keep yourself clean, right? In, in the washing of the word, right? And, of, and laying on the hands, you need to know when you are struggling and, and with, with issues in life and, 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 and things that, uh, that are, are, are hard, like obstacles in, in, in your life and with the flesh or something, sometimes you need to come up and be laid on with hands by the elders, the Bible says, all the time, come up and be laid on the hands. Don't be afraid, you know? And, and people, you have people, you have to keep warning them about the resurrection of the dead, that there's a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked that's coming. And then, and then it says also of the, an eternal judgment, that there's going to be a judgment, an eternal judgment. Amen? And we want to be judged on, on, the, on the side of Yeshua, right? We don't want to be the goats. We want to be the sheep, right? And this, he says, we will do... If Elohim permits. In other words, if you want to keep staying in the elementary thing, you know, keep on feeding your flesh and whatever else, Yahweh will allow us that to do that. He'll, he'll, he's grace. He gives us time. But guess what? He may not. He, he permits us time. But we shouldn't take that for granted because tomorrow's not promised, right? If we, if we continue to stay immature in, in that cycle of failing over and over in the elementary basics, of our faith, you know, t time is not something that Yahweh says, I, I must give you tomorrow in his law. It's not the case. You know, they even make, you know, caskets for young people, right? Much more to older people. If we keep failing to master and make the grade in these elementary areas, it's because we're distracted by our own feeding and nurturing of our old fleshly identity. Amen? Next slide. That's really what we're doing. We're attempting, like Judas, to, you know, to nurture the evil, wicked cares of the flesh. And at the same time, Judas was professing to be a, a follower of Yeshua. So he was professing to be growing and maturing, you know, in, in, in his calling as, you know, as a born again and a new life believer in, in, in faith. So he was walking along and all the other disciples thought he was right. But he was, he was pursuing his fleshly cares. And, but we're only deceiving ourselves when we do this. We cannot do both, can we? If we keep falling, failing to thrive, be, you know, forever staying as little infants and, and not maturing in our faith, we are instead walking towards the maturity of our evil, wicked flesh, which ultimately leads us to what's described here in, in, in Hebrews number 6. Hebrews chapter 6 says this, for it is impossible, say impossible. This is where we don't want to get to. We know all things are possible for Yahweh, but there's a time where Yahweh will say no longer possible. In the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, they tasted the gift of, of, of salvation, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of Elohim, Yeshua in us, the hope of glory. And they saw he was good. And the power of the age to come. Amen. Not, even though they're living in this age, they felt the power of the spirit. That's the power of eternity. And, ha, and then they have fallen away. Judas came to this point. King Saul came to this point. And Jeremy preached about a while back. To restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the son of Elohim to their own, whose harm? Their own harm. And holding him up to contempt. Amen. You know, we, we can't stay in this, this cycle, of endless cycle of the basics. Oh, I need to repent. Oh, fellow, you know, I need to repent on this. I need to fellow. There needs to be a maturing. We need to come to the next level. Amen. I can hear the Spirit say, come up higher, right? Come up higher to where the Spirit flows free. But let's have the next slide. Amen. A child is ready to learn. A child is not embarrassed about the lack of ability to walk. Next slide. A child is humble and accepts a willingness and desire to learn. Our Messiah made this point during his ministry, 
in Matthew 18, 2 through 4. He called to him a child, and he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Next, next slide. As children, we must learn to walk. Amen? Ephesians 5 says this, 5, 8 says this. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So walk, and other translations say live, because walk is, basically means live, or a way of life. Walk as children of light. Amen? But again, more specifically, what does it mean to walk in the faith? What does it look like? Well, here in Ephesians 5, 8, in which we are, to, we are told, Yahweh, you know, says this. The Spirit says through Paul, walk as children of light. Amen? See, clearly this is a metaphor. Fortunately, the Bible defines our metaphors for us. We don't have to guess, right? So what is light according to the Bible? Well, Isaiah 51, 4 says, Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law, a Torah, say Torah, will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light, say light, to the peoples. Proverbs 6, 23 says this, For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching, Torah, say Torah, a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. See, the light is the law of Elohim, or in Hebrew, the Torah. You know, the Torah is the commandment that Moses wrote. The Torah is how we are to walk in the faith. Exodus 18.20 says this, And you shall warn them about the statutes and the law, Torah, and make them Know the way in which they must walk, right? It's a must that we walk in them. And what they must do, amen? Leviticus 18.4 says, You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and what? Walk in them. I am Yahweh your Elohim. Leviticus 26.3 says, If you, what? In my statutes and observe my commandments and do them. See, in, in, in the uh, Hebrew, 19 Strong's 1980, halak. It means to go, come, walk, to act, to move, right? If, you, if you're walking, you know, if you walk or, or your way of life is in Yahweh, you will act according to his ways, amen? This is what defines our existence as Elohim's children, is that we're walking in his ways, so Acts 17, 28 says, For in him we live and move and exist, as some of our, your own prophets. This is Paul speaking to the Gentiles, to the Greeks on, Mar, on Mars Hills. He quotes their prophets, or their poets, excuse me, their poets. He have said, we are his offspring. Amen? As children of Elohim, we don't have to, to guess what we should be doing as a way of life. You don't have to say, what is my purpose? Yahweh Elohim told us how to walk in faith. That's your purpose. We are to emulate his ways. Amen? Ephesians 5, 1 says, Therefore be imitators of Elohim as beloved children. That is what our Messiah did. Yeshua walked out to faith by following Torah. The same commandments that Moses wrote. We do not have to guess how our Messiah Yeshua walked or his way of life in the faith. Yeshua did not walk as a good Baptist or a good Methodist or a Catholic or any other type of man-made denomination or doctrine. Messiah Yeshua walked as a Torah-observant Jew. He walked according to how the word of Elohim told him to walk. 
Consider the insightful words of Dr. Brad Young. He, he doesn't use the word uh, Yeshua, he uses Jesus, but I'll, 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 I'll help him out here. We too often view Yeshua in a, a historical vacuum with the result that, he, that we transpose our 21st century Western values and concerns onto him. We tend to make him into a good Methodist, Catholic, Baptist, Anglican, Pentecostal, or whatever denominational orientation we may be. The historic Yeshua remains a Jew. His faith and obedience to his Father in heaven had at its center the precious gift given at Mount Sinai, Torah. Amen? So when we enter the faith, we are to learn how to observe the word of Elohim as Moses wrote it. In fact, Acts 15 offers us some insight into this process and how it, has a, a comp, it was accomplished in the first century church. In the first century, when the Gentiles were coming into the faith, it was common for them to be familiar with a life saturated with the worship of false gods. At that worship of false gods, common practices included worshiping idols, sexual immorality with temple prostitutes, strangling sacrifices, and drinking the sacrificial blood. When we come into the faith, we are to immediately follow the one true Elohim, amen, and him alone, right? Thus, per the decree in Acts 15, the Gentiles were told to immediately stop, say stop, the practice of worshiping false gods when coming into the faith. And we read that. Acts 15, 19 says, Therefore my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to Elohim, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols and from sexual immorality and from what has been strangled and from blood. See, they were to start uh, with simply that. That's where they started. They were not troubled with being expected to know more than that when first turning to Elohim. But they were to not stop there. They weren't just to stop there. Yeah, walking in faith is not simply limited to abandoning the worship of false gods, is it? That is only the beginning. You could say that is simply learning to crawl. They were children in the faith, infants really. They needed to learn how to walk in the Torah as written by Moses, just as Messiah Yeshua exampled for us. And how did they accomplish that in the first century? Well, by, they looked at the writings of Moses, the Torah. They were taught in the synagogues, as we read in the very next verse. In Acts 15, 21. For from ancient generations, Moses has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he is read every Sabbath in the synagogue. So when the Gentiles came to synagogue every Sabbath, as we see in Acts, they, they heard about Moses and they learned more and more and grew in their knowledge. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you see, when we come into the faith, we are to have a Holy Spirit given desire not to sin. Most come into the faith already know this fact, this basic fact. This is a basic fact. But what is sin? Sin is breaking of the law of Elohim. It is lawlessness. 1 John 3, 4, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. As we learn and follow these commandments, we are then learning to walk. We are avoiding sin. In this way, just as little children learn from imitating what they see their parents doing, so we are imitating Messiah Yeshua in our walk. We are then walking as he walked because of our Messiah's lack of sin, meaning he never broke the Torah, but he always followed it. 1 John 3, 8 tells us that. But, uh, but that, we're not going to look at that. You can look at that at yourself. First John, excuse me, 3, 4. That he never, Yeshua never sinned. Yeshua did not sin, meaning 
he followed the law of Elohim. Thus, he is our perfect example on how to walk out the faith and keep the commandments. Amen? 1 John 2, 1 through 6 says this, My little children, he calls his little children, the Spirit is speaking through John, I am writing these things to you so that you may not, what? That's right. So that you may not sin. When we mature, our, uh, we need to find a way to consistently not sin. You shouldn't always be fa falling into sin regularly. That's what an immature person does spiritually. Mature people learn not to sin more consistently. Less mature people sin more consistently. But as you grow in your walk, that shouldn't be, you know, your, your practice, your way of life, sinning. It should be not sinning, walking in righteousness, amen, should be your, your practice of life. But, if any, but, but he goes on and says, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua Messiah the righteous. He is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him. How do you want to know how, that you know Yahweh? If we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of Elohim. How many know that all the commandments are based on the love? of Elohim, to love Yahweh with all your heart, mind, and soul, and likewise to love your neighbor, right? So, and that's the commandments. That's the foundation. They're hung on that. The law of Moses is hung on that. Amen? The law that Yahweh, it's really Yahweh's law that he gave through Moses. Anyway, but so, if, but anyone says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. The truth is not him, but whoever keeps his word, it says, in him truly the love of Elohim is what? perfected. In other words, mature. You mature and grow in that. You don't stay in the elementary basics of, oh, I keep sitting, oh, I keep sitting, I got to rip it, oh, I keep sitting. And you never, you got to grow from that. Amen? By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to what? Walk in the same way in which he walked. Commandment keeping. Torah. Right? Isn't that interesting? If we say we abide in him, we ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Someday we're going to see Messiah Yeshua face to face. Amen? Praise him. Hallelujah. And in order to, to, to prepare ourselves for that glorious day, we would like to encourage all to learn to walk. Amen? Turn to your brother and sister and say walk. We should abide in him and seek out the perfect commandments in the Torah as he perfectly exampled for us. Amen? 1 John 2, 2 8, 28 says, And now, little children, abide in him. That means stay in him. Not, not in their flesh, but in him. That's, that's what a mature believer does. You can't be in the flesh and in the spirit at the same time, can you? Can you, can, can you be sinning and be in the spirit at the same time? No. If you're sinning, you're in your flesh, Right? Amen? So, so abide in him so that when he appears, who? Yeshua. We may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming, right? We don't want to be like, oh, no, he's here. We don't want to be like the five foolish virgins that when the Messiah come, they were locked out, right? We don't want to be the goats that said, depart from me into everlasting punishment, right? Yeshua is coming again, right? And as young children, we need to prepare by keeping our walk pure. Amen? Remember, cleansing yourself, washing yourself. So, Psalm 119.9 says this, How can a young man stay on the path of purity? By living according to your what? Your word. Amen? Your commandments, your Torah. As, as children, we must stay walking or living according to the purity of Yahweh's word because our ultimate goal is, is to, to right? We, we, we just sang a song about, well, we sing a usually song about we want to see his face, you know, and, uh, you know, we want, but that's our goal, right? We want to see him. To we want to grow up and mature so that when we meet 
the word of Elohim in person, the living Torah, Yeshua, will experience the wonderful mystery revealed in 1 John 3. 1 John 3 says this, Beloved, we are Elohim's children now, right, in the presence. And what we will be has not yet appeared, the future. But we know that when he appears, get it? See the word here, play there? This is a mystery. He's, let's, let me go over this in case you all, some of y'all missed it. What we will be has not yet appeared, right? We're chosen out of him now, but, but we're going to mature into something that will appear. And then it tells you what will appear. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Amen? Let's give Yahweh praise. Amen? Hallelujah. We shall be like him. Do you know that Yahweh can't sin? Raise your hand if you know Yahweh can't sin. We won't be able to sin like him. That's only, we, we, we're just seeing in, in part. We, we, we're just seeing through a glass dimly. But we, we, we know this much, that we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him does what? Purifies himself. As who? As he is pure. We want to be like him. We got we to gotta grow to that next level where we're not still struggling in the, in the, in the basic elementary of the faith, right? 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, For now, right here in the present, we see in a mirror dimly, but then, future, face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. Amen? You know, just like Yahweh knows us fully right now, we're going to know him fully then. Amen? Let's give Yahweh praise. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank him. Thank him. So, brothers and sisters, I pray that you've been blessed by this teaching. Remember, continue to walk as Yeshua walked. Go to that next level. Don't stay in the, in the elementary levels of the faith. But we, we need to be walking in the whole word of Yahweh. Amen. Yahweh bless you.